Hello, hello, hello. How are you all today? I am Dr. Stevie, and you are here on The Conversation with Stevie. The Conversation with Stevie is the place where we uncover the what, the why. I'm so excited by our guest. The why behind the what of what people do. And so I told y'all I'm super excited because the woman who is going to be having the conversation with us today, y'all, listen, you need to make sure that you are tapped in. You need to make sure that you're taking notes because I've been able to hang out with this woman, and she definitely has taught me a lot just by the way that she shows up in the world. So I'm not going to prolong this. I am going to make sure that we welcome El Denise on the phone. Hello, El Denise. How are you? I am great. How are you? Doing good, doing good. And so I believe that the best introduction one can do is of themselves. So I'm going to give you a few moments to introduce yourself to everyone. Thank you so much. Um, Of course, you already know my name is El Denise Jackson. I um, hail from the beautiful state of New Jersey. I live outside the powerful area of Washington, D.C., and I help uh, large companies, medium-sized companies, and some small companies Uh, retrieve or obtain government contracts. I also help individuals step into their leadership position, whether they manage someone or not. Yes, you can be a leader without managing other people, Um, but step into their proper leadership position in their career. And then there are entrepreneurs that um, I help them make income from their ideas. I help them really see what their idea can bring. And so normally people say just focus on one thing, but the problem with that is is that I am these people and they are me, so it's so easy for me to help them, um, and that's why I do what I do in three different areas, but at the end of the day, it's all about leadership and business development. Awesome. Y'all see why I was so nervous introducing her, because I knew she was going to bring all this value and wisdom. So listen. I don't normally get tongue-tied, Elden, <laughs> but I love the work that you're doing out here in the world, and I love the fact that you are seriously here helping businesses, and getting these contracts is important. I would love to ask you, what are some of the median criteria that it takes for people to make sure that they are having contracts that are um, with the government? Um, so one of the biggest things is, you know, everybody wants to, to make a million dollars, but they don't want to spend 99. And you have to be able to make sure that you have some sort of cash flow before you go in because the, the government wants to make sure that you can handle money. So you may say, well, I heard of a person that got a contract and they just started or they seem to have fallen out of nowhere. And that does happen um, sometimes in the beginning, people may get, you know, a sole source selection, which means there is no competition. There was not a bidding process. But I want to dial it back to make sure that everybody understands if you're going after a contract, you have to make sure to pick which, um, which certifying area you want to be in, whether it's woman, minority, disabled, veteran-owned, all three, disadvantaged, um, or all four, <laughs> um, disadvantaged, Um, and make sure that you have um, put your business on the SAM.gov, which is the area. It's like a database where all the businesses are. But it's, you know, and and sometimes you don't have to always go through the Small Business Association. You can self-certify, which means, you know, you are a woman, so you are 100% woman-owned, or you are a veteran, so you are also veteran-owned. And you can do that first, but definitely have your business structure in place. Um, If you have a a product, have a business license, have your business insurances, whether even if you have a service, um, if you're doing professional services, you don't have a product, but you are providing um, administrative or training or writing services, you still need to make sure that you're incorporated in some way, whether it's as an Inc, an LLC, whatever works for your industry. Um, and you have to make sure that you are ready to do business. And so you don't want 
to have an opportunity presented to you. Um, sometimes that happens whether something's canceled, there's an emergency um, in the in the in the world, and maybe you know that one thing and they need you. You don't want to say, oh, I don't have my business insurance or I don't have this structure. Make sure to have your structure, your articles of incorporation, and all of those basic things um, before you before you try to go after um, a contract. You don't have to have that in order to do research to find out what's out there, what contracts are worth, things like that. Um, I would all I would definitely say do your due diligence. But if you are not good in writing, if you are not good in putting this proposal together, you may have to hire someone. Hence the cash flow. Um, that's another reason for cash flow is to make sure that you can um, hire someone if you need to hire them. I've been a consultant in the business for a long time, and a lot of small companies, they want to get in. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to bid on. Um, if it's the right thing, they say, oh, it takes a lot of work. It doesn't take a lot of work if you have the right people to put the, put the proposal together, but they're not going to do it for free. They're not going to do it on a consignment, meaning if you win, because time is money. And um, as long as I've been in this business, there might be a few people that might do it for that $25 an hour or a flat rate, but most people, depending, because if you've never um, – if you've never presented a proposal before, you don't know what goes in there. And so um, it depends on your situation, how organized you are. You definitely need to have your own um, financial statements and um, capability statements and all of those things in place. So if somebody has something to work with, you can't have a conversation with someone for 15 minutes and say, go write this proposal. Like, it just doesn't work that way. So I hope that gives a insight on different levels of what is needed. I love that. Thank you. And so how can someone work with you specifically with, um, I know the consultation, but are you saying that's the only way or how can someone help you, have you help them on this journey? Uh, so, and I do this really on a, on a case-by-case basis because I really do not, I really do not advertise for it. It's just people that know me know, and they may uh, send someone my way. Um, I, I Most of my business, probably 90% of it is word of mouth. Um, I really don't market or anything like that. So if someone is really interested, um, we would have a conversation. If things are in play, uh, meaning you have all of your business structure um, in order, then um, you know, we could talk about the best way to go about it. I do do consultation in helping people um, get started. I do look at people's proposals. Um, sometimes people, they're very good putting everything together. They just want to make sure that they're compliant. Or they might want me to look at the RFP and help them with a the decision. And so we decide on what you need, and then um, I give you my rate for what that is. And it just it really depends on what's needed. Awesome. And so how did you get into this work? I fell into it. <laughs> I totally fell into it. I was um, an administrative assistant. I moved down uh, to the Washington, D.C. area because I was engaged. And I just knew the desktop publishing and word processing work that I did. Um, and I was also executive assistant sometimes. But I worked. I always worked for, like, large or major companies back in New Jersey. And uh, I moved to the D.C. area, and I really fell into it working at MCI um, years ago. And they needed somebody that knew Mac and PC, both systems, and I did. And I had no idea what the environment was, and it was an international bids department. So I worked there. Everything was great, and it was great working with all these international people. And then I needed to find some part-time work. So I was looking for the same type of work, and literally around the corner <laughs> was a company called Optum, which is no longer um, Optum Professional Services, and they um, brought companies in-house. They had a whole setup in-house. They had the war room. They had all the computers, the printers. You could do everything at their location. And so I used to work with them for, oh, good Lord, a few years, and 
the probably second time that I worked with them or the second proposal, because once I was working with them, they had so many things come in. I was just one of their um, resident consultants. And there was a woman by the name of Chris Babix, um, and she said, I like you. You pay attention to detail, and I don't have to go over your work. And I said, okay. And so she said, I want you to work with me at some other places. And then she connected me with a company called SEIC. And from there, I just was in it for real. And it was probably maybe over like a year and a half that I really became cemented um, in this work. So I truly just fell into it. It wasn't anything I was looking for because I didn't know what a proposal was before I started working at MCI. But um, the work was satisfying. Um, it was like the A team. It was like you, you're you building something from nothing, and it works, and you win. And my win rate is, is pretty good. So um, I don't want to say pretty good. It's really good. <laughs> so um, I've always been on great teams, and I just fell into it. I really – I, I just fell into it. That's the best way I can describe it. I love that because I always tell people I fell into entrepreneurship. <laughs> I never wanted to be an entrepreneur, believe it or not. And, yeah, I understand that. So really? Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I actually thought I would be in corporate, and I – went into a job when I was 30, and I ended up being very much um, in a space where I felt like a caged bird. I ended up super stressed, and I went from a size 14 to a size zero. I had shingles, and I had to have three colonoscopies within 30 days to within 24 hours. So it yielded me the opportunity to be in entrepreneurship because I knew I wanted freedom. So... I and you know me personally. I if I would have known me then, um, how I know myself now, and knew what my true it factor was, I never would have been in that environment anyway because that wasn't conducive to me. But at thirty, right after grad school, um, going from kindergarten to grad school, that's where I ended up. So I definitely understand the whole thing of falling into something. <laughs> I get it. And I wanted to ask you um, a specific question that I ask all of my guests. It is a fill-in-the-blank question, and it literally is, we cannot leave the conversation today, Stevie, without everyone knowing, and you fill in the blank with whatever you think they should know. We cannot leave the conversation today without everyone knowing that you lead whatever you do. Um, some people say that leaders are born, but if you really look at your life, you make decisions that change trajectories of your family, yourself, um, people in your circle, and everyone wants to be a boss. You are already a boss. <laughs> you just have to shape the type of boss and in what environment you want to be. And I just want to make sure that people know that because some people strive to be something, and you may already be that, but just in a smaller scale, and then you need to grow into, you know, this other level that you want to be. But I think everybody needs to know that. Love that. I love that. Because at the end of the day, you lead yourself. <laughs> like, that's the first yeah. leader you are. So right. I right. definitely resonate. Go ahead. What were you saying? No, no, I was I was agreeing with you. I said absolutely right. Awesome, awesome. Well, El Denise, you know um, that I truly, truly, truly enjoy um, speaking to you, and this conversation has been very insightful and delightful as well. So what I want you to do before we end today is to make sure everyone has your contact information. My contact information is easy. You can find me at ldeniseJackson.com. I'm L. Denise Jackson on all of my social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, everything. So I'm um, very, very easy to find. Love that, love that, love that. Well, everyone, you have heard the conversation with Stevie today. Oh, my gosh. Y'all definitely get connected with Elle Denise because she is amazing. Follow her, connect with her, and even more, like, make sure that you have the business together 
for your own business so that if you have a desire to work with the government and get contracts, and I've heard tremendous things about these contracts, y'all, this is a different way for you to make money. And so, you know, I'm always about helping you to monetize your knowledge and expertise so that if the world shuts down, your bank account does not have to. And we've seen the world shut down in so many different ways. I want to make sure that you're getting the money. So that's why it's amazing to be able to have this conversation today. If you want to connect with me, just understand that you just need to know how to spell my first name, S-T-E-V-I-I, so that you can go to workwithstevie.com. And we look forward to having another conversation with you. I always end everything I do the same way, and that's to say, make it a great day. Don't have a great day. Make it a great day. Why? Because you, 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 and yes, you too have the power to do so. Bye for now.